Hello, in this video I will explain inventory control and which cost flow assumptions to adopt using Excel, FIFO, LIPO or average cost and explain how can I use this method on Excel even if I have more than one item using Excel functions only, no macro, no VBA. So stay with me to the end. I will review each method in periodic system. As we know, in periodic system, we determine ending inventory by physical count. Cost of goods sold is calculated as the following. Beginning inventory plus net purchases equals goods available for sale. Goods available for sale minus ending inventory equals cost of goods sold. Then we can calculate gross profit. Gross profit equals net sales minus cost of goods sold. To illustrate the three methods, I will use an example included in intermediate accounting book. And then I will build an Excel file for two items. And we will add this item after finishing the file to ensure that we do well. You can add more items if you want. We have here some inventory movements as we see here. Let's review the average cost. The average cost method prices items in the inventory on the basis of the average cost of all similar goods available during a period. To illustrate use of the periodic inventory method, we compute the ending inventory and cost of goods sold using a weighted average method as follows. On March 2, we purchased 2,000 items multiplied by $4. The total is $8,000. On March 15, we purchased 6,000 items multiplied by $4.4. The total is $26,400. Finally, on March 30, we purchased 2,000 items multiplied by $4.75. The total is $9,500. The total purchases by quantity, 10,000 items. Total purchases at cost, $43,900. If we divide the cost by the quantity, we get weighted average cost per unit. It's $4.39. Ending inventory in units are 6,000 units. Ending inventory equals... 6,000 multiplied by $4.39 equals $26,340. The cost of goods sold is Cost of goods available for sale minus ending inventory. Before we go to the Excel file, I will talk about LIFO and FIFO. Last in, first out, LIFO. The LIFO method matches the cost of the goods purchased against revenue. If we use a periodic inventory system, it assumes that the cost of the total quantity sold or issued during the month comes from the most recent purchases. And we price the ending inventory in order of the oldest by the date of purchase. If we turn to our example, ending inventory in units are 6,000 units. They are the first purchase transaction and the residual will come from the second one. 2000 multiplied by $4 equals 8000. 4000 multiplied by $4.4 equals $17,600. The cost of ending inventory is $25,600. Cost of goods available for sale. $43,900 minus ending inventory, $25,600. The cost of goods sold is $18,300. First in, first out. FIFO. The FIFO method assumes that a company uses goods in the order in which it purchases them. In other words, the FIFO method assumes that the first goods purchased are the first used, or the first sold. The inventory remaining must therefore represent the most recent purchases. 
If we turn to our example, ending inventory in units are 6,000 units. They are the last purchase transaction and the residual will come from the previous one. 2,000 multiplied by $4.75 equals $9,500. 4,000 multiplied by $4.4 equals $70,600. The cost of ending inventory is $27,100. Cost of good available for sale, $43,900 minus ending inventory, $27,100. The cost of goods sold is $16,800. Now we can move to the Excel template. Let's see how we can create it. The first worksheet I will rename it Inventory List. Let's type Item Beginning Inventory Purchases Sales Ending Inventory FIFO LIFO Average Cost You can add more details like code number if you want. We have to change column's width and change font size. Suppose that we have two items which are pen and pencil. All other fields will be auto-generated using Excel formulas. Don't forget to make conditional formatting. I talked about that before in Accounting System on Excel video. Select A, H columns, Home tab, Conditional Formatting, New Role. Use a formula to determine which cells to format. Type equals $A1 isn't equal 0. Go to Format. Borders. Select borders you want. I will repeat this step in other worksheets. The second worksheet we have to create is warehouse movement. This sheet is very simple. Let's create it together. We want serial numbers, date, invoice to indicate beginning inventory, sales, and purchases. It's better to use data validation. Select column C, data tab, data validation, list, in the source right, beginning inventory, sales, purchases. To prevent the user from entering except these three data. Item or item code, also, we have to use data validation for just input inventories items. But here I want dynamic range. I talked about that before in multi-filter function with dynamic ranges video. Go to inventory list worksheet and in any cell type equals offset A1 with absolute reference, comma, one, comma, comma, count A, Column A with absolute reference, close parentheses for count A function, minus 1. Select all formula and copy it. Go to A1. Go to formula tab. Define name. In the first two field, paste the formula. Turn back to Warehouse Movement Worksheet. Select Column B, Data tab, Data Validation. Click in the Source field. Press F3. Select Item. OK. OK. Now we have to type only our items that we have in Inventory List Worksheet. Quantity price, total, 
and invoice type to indicate whether the invoice is in or out to help me in formulas. Now I will type data like you see in this example. After doing some formatting, the sheet will look like this. In A2, we want Excel to make auto numbers for each transaction. Equals sequence count A column B close parentheses minus one close parentheses. Before make calculations, let's make dynamic ranges to make calculations easier. In any cell, let's type equals offset A1 with absolute reference, comma, one, comma, comma, count A, column B in warehouse movement with absolute reference, close parentheses, minus one, comma, close parentheses. I did that before and I will make names for all data in this sheet. By replacing A1 with B1 and then C1 and so on. We have here two formulas in this sheet. Total equals quantity multiplied by price. This is a dynamic formula, so no need to fill series. Invoice type equals if invoice equals sales between two quotation marks, comma, out, comma, in, between two quotation marks. This formula will help us in filter function. Turn back to inventory list worksheet to determine the quantities of each of beginning inventory, purchases, sales, and ending inventory for each item. In B2, we can type equals sum ifs. The range we want to sum is quantity. The first criteria range is items. The first criteria is item. The second criteria range is invoice. The second criteria is B1, just fix a row. I talked about absolute, relative and mixed references in the previous video. The link is in the description. Fill series to the right. For the cells, precede the formula with minus sign. For the quantity of the ending inventory, select a range, press Alt and equals to auto sum. Turn back to warehouse movement sheet. I want to create three worksheets to compute ending inventory by three ways, FIFO, FIFO, and average cost. But before, I want to make filter on in invoices and sort these numbers by the items and then by themselves ascending for LIFO and descending for FIFO. I will create it in this sheet and then I will move it to new one. This is the most important section of this video, so try to focus with me. Type in any cell equals filter SN, comma, invoice type equals in between two quotation marks. Copy the formula to the right. Replace SN with invoice. Then replace invoice with items.
these formulas only for help and explanation. I want now to sort my data depending on items. To do that, open Office Clipboard. Copy this formula without equal sign. In J2, copy the formula also. Then we will edit it. Proceed our formula with sort by function. At the end of the formula, type comma. The first sorting factor is items. Comma, type 1 for ascending sort. Comma. The second sorting factor is the serial numbers. Comma, type 1 for ascending sort. To understand what we did, let's use xlookup function. In K2 equals xlookup. Select whole range, we will see hashtag sign after J2. That refers to dynamic range, so if we put in new data, the range will be updated. Comma, SN, comma, invoice. The same we will do in L2, just replace invoice with items equals xlookup g2 hashtag sn items note that sorting has become based on items and then on the serial numbers let's here replace one by minus one the order will be from the newest to oldest according to each item Control and z to undo now let's make lookup for the quantity and the price. Put title for each column. Now copy these items. Create a new sheet and paste them. Rename the sheet Average Costs. It's the easiest way. I will start with it. Even though I don't need ending inventory in this sheet, but I will input it. In F2 equals XLOOKUP C2 hashtag Inventory list, column A, inventory list, column E. G2, I need the total, equals D2 hashtag multiplied by E2 hashtag. Now, in I1, type item. In I2, equals item. To determine the quantity of goods available for sale, we want some if function equals sum if c2 hashtag i2 hashtag d2 hashtag. The same for the total equals sum if. C2, I2, G2. To determine the average price, we divide the total by the quantity equals K2 hashtag slash J2 hashtag. To trap error, precede the formula with if error. Put the quantity of ending inventory by xlookup function equals xlookup i2 hashtag inventory list column a 
Inventory List Column A. The total will be equals M2 hashtag multiplied by L2 hashtag. Now we finished this calculation sheet. Turn back to the inventory list worksheet in H2 type equals average cost N2 hashtag. At the end of this video, I will create a worksheet for cost of goods sold and gross profit. Now we are going to create a LIPO worksheet. Copy Average Cost Worksheet. Right click on the Sheet tab. Move or copy. Move to End. Create a copy. Rename the sheet LIPO. Delete this data. In G2, type equals minimum F2 D2. Fill series to G3. The wanted value here is 100, not 700. I'm going to subtract G2 from F3. Fill series to G4. The wanted value is 0, not 600. In fact, I have to sum from G2 to G3 instead of G3. And I have to fix G2. The formula does very well for the first item, but to make it suitable for all items, I will replace sum with sum if or sum ifs function. I will use sum ifs. Sum range is G2 with absolute reference to G3 with relative reference. Criteria range is C2 with absolute reference to C3 with relative reference. Criteria is C4. Fill series. But I want the formula to turn back to min F8D8 when I arrive to pencil. To do that, I will use if function. After equals, press Alt and Enter to make the formula easier to read. Type after equals if if C8 isn't equal C7, comma min F8 D8. Comma, enter. Fill series up and down. The formulas are ready. To find the cost of ending inventory in H1, total in H2 equals G2 multiplied by E2. Fill series down. This worksheet is ready now. I want to sum the ending inventory for each item. Let me type here items ending inventory. Here I will type equals item. And here equals sum ifs. Column H, Column C, Item.
Turn back to inventory list worksheet. In G2, just type equals M2 hashtag in LIFO worksheet. We are going to create FIFO worksheet. I did the LIFO before because it's easier to do that. Now, all I want to do is to copy the LIFO sheet and rename it FIFO. And go to A2. Replace the last one with minus one. Turn back to inventory list sheet. In F2, just type equals M2 hashtag in FIFO worksheet. You will see that we have all ending inventory balance for each item in all methods. We can add a worksheet for cost of goods sold and gross profit. I will rename it gross profit. Let's type these data, beginning inventory, purchases, cost of goods available for sale, ending inventory, cost of goods sold, sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit, adopted assumption, ending inventory, total. Go to inventory list sheet, copy F1, H1 range. In H2, right-click, choose Transpose. Use Format Painter to remove cells formatting. In G2, use Data Validation. List, select H2, H4. In I2, let's sum all items cost by FIFO equals sum column F in inventory list sheet. The same do for all assumptions. In B2 equals sum ifs total invoice A2 fill series down cost of goods available for sale here I will use subtotal function subtotal 9 for sum comma B2 B3 ending inventory Use XLOOKUP function. XLOOKUP G2 The range H2, H4 The range I2, I4 Precede the formula with minus sign. Cost of goods sold equals subtotal 9 The range B2, B5 Copy B2 to B10 to determine sales. Cost of goods sold equals minus B6. Format Painter. To determine gross profit equals subtotal 9, the range B10, B11. If I change the assumption, the gross profit will change. We can hide calculation sheets if you want. Now, if I add ruler, the item I explained at the beginning of the video, to warehouse, just I have to fill series in inventory list, FIFO, 
and lipo sheets. And I will see that the file give me the same results calculated before. That's all for today. See you soon.